Hey pilots, Drain Man here. Today I have a very special video. Today we're going to do something very awesome. We are going to set up the Baby Hawk R Pro. This is the 4 inch version. There's a ton. This thing is so new. It's brand new. Just came out. It's literally hot off the press. Everybody's loving these things. They're full of power. They're lightweight and they fly like a 5 inch. Why not have one? Yes, there is a ton of videos on these. Everybody's opening them. They're showing you how they fly. They're showing you what comes in the box. They're showing you line of sight, FPV, racing footage. You can see and find everything that you want on this drone, except how to set it up. So today, I'm going to take the time to go through with you guys how to set this up. This is more for the beginners who just bought it watched a couple videos, saw how cool it is, they know they want one, now they need to know how to set it up. If you have one, you've already set it up, then this video is not for you. If you just bought one or got one on the way and you want to know how to set it up or at least want to do it how Drain Man does it, then this video is for you. Alright, first thing we need to do is go ahead and open this puppy up. I'm not going to spend a lot of time going over what's in the box because you guys already know. You guys already watched a bunch of videos on it. You've got uh, manuals and paperwork. You've got your actual quad. You've got some extra props. You have got some extra screws, a zip tie, and an extra prop nut. You're probably going to need that. There's extra grommets. You've got an 850 milliamp hour ADC continuous 160C burst. 4S LiPo right here. Here's the actual quad. I'm not going to go over all the specs, although it's freaking sweet, man. This thing is just, it's so sick looking. It's like all props once you put them on. There's no drone there. There's this little body in the middle, these big old 4 inch props. Your camera angle right now is at like 100 degrees. I'm being sarcastic. It's like 70 degrees. If you are a newer pilot, drop your camera tilt. You are not going to want to fly your quad like this. You see your camera facing that way? When you get up in the air and you try to level out, you're going to actually be like this. And that's going to put you balls to the wall fast. So take your screwdriver, loosen these two screws, and drop this down. Uh, they did a few new upgrades. Uh, it's no longer unibody. You've got separate arms. They're not single arms. They're bi arms. You do get an extra one in the box. Um, I'll show you. I didn't want to, but I'll show you. There it is. All right. You, so if you do break an arm, you'll have to change two, and you can order these extra. I don't think they're much. They're just a couple bucks. Okay, the battery strap. The battery strap is way too big for the battery. Emacs is working on that. They've said it. So what's happening is you're putting this in, and when you're locking this down, you're only getting a little bit of hold, and then you've got all this extra floppy whoppy. Emacs says they're working on that, so they're slowly transitioning, so it'll, it'll be all right once they get rid of all of them. I'm not going to go over the drone anymore. We're going to dive right into setting this thing up. If you just got it, you pulled it out of the box, and now you don't know what to do with it. All right, pilots, one thing I want to talk about with this guy, it does come with a built-in receiver. It is what's called a B. BNF or a bind and fly and what that means is it has a receiver in it already so what you'll have to do is you'll have to bind this to your remote and in this video I'm going to go through the steps on how to do that so the receiver that comes in this is not your everyday RXSR or your everyday bind and fly cheap old receiver that they give you which is an XM or an XM plus this is not that it is a cheap receiver but it's just not that receiver this is a D8 receiver so it's not going to communicate the same as the others so if you don't know how to change that it's not going to work for you all right so the very first thing we need to do is we need to go ahead and get our canopy open so we can get inside and get done what we need to get done if you don't have one you are going to need a 1.5 mm hex driver if you don't have one i will link one down in the video description if not you can just order it on amazon go ahead and pull out this bottom screw right here Once you have taken those two screws out, set them to the side so you do not lose them. And you should now, your canopy should just pop right off. Now you can just loosen this a little bit and not take this off. So that way you can kind of fiddle and try to get in there. I recommend just pulling it off all the way so you're not killing yourself. 
Okay, as you'll see right here, you have an MMCX connector. You can pop this out. You just literally pull this out. Be gentle so you don't break these solder joints. And you can literally put on any MMCX antenna you want. The Lumineer Micro Axie is a very good antenna. It'll give you the full range of an Omni antenna without having to use this little tiny dipole antenna because it's really just not the best antenna. And you're going to get much better video if you change this out and put in an Axie or just any camera for that matter. And you can do that using an MMCX connector antenna. Okay guys, so for your VTX, let's get into your VTX real quick. Your VTX has two power settings. You have 25 milliwatts and you have 200 milliwatts. In order to make sure you have 200 milliwatts, you will need to hold this button for five seconds and cycle over to the third menu, which is gonna be your power menu. And in that menu, you are gonna select until you get a little tiny dot down here in the bottom corner. That is gonna let you know that you're on 200 milliwatts. If you do not have the dot, you are on 25 milliwatts. If you're looking for 200, you need the dot. If you want to unlock your VTX to be able to go to higher, you know, higher power, you want to be able to go to channels that are just not regular channels in the locked industry, this does require a ham license. Make sure you have your license and that you performing and doing everything correctly. But what you will do is you will hold down the VTX button and you will power up. And as you can see, I have a U. This lets me know that I am unlocked. So that is going to take care of your VTX. Also, remember you can change out your antenna at any given time and put on a better antenna. As far as your receiver goes, now we need to bind your quad to your remote so that you can be able to control this quad. All right, so get your radio out, power it up. Welcome to OpenTX. Go to menu, go to a new model, hold enter, click create model. Now that you have a new model page over, I'm going to go up because it is easier and head over to the internal RF mode. Your internal RF module is going to do the work. You don't have an external one. You're not running Crossfire or you're not running R9 or anything like that. You are going to come right here to the mode. If this mode right here, it says D16, you're going to press enter and you're going to move down to D8 because this is a D8 receiver. You have to have that on in order for this to work. If you don't have this on, it's just not going to work. It's that simple. If you do not have this D8 here, you do need to go into OpenTX. You need to go online. You need to get the new firmware and you need to download it and you need to flash your Tyrannus with the newer firmware and you've got to make sure that you disable the European mode. And it's going to have a little E and a U. And all that is is that's basically allowing you to run D8. So make sure you do that if you do not find this D8. There is videos out on how to do that with OpenTX and stuff like that. You'll be able to find it. All right, so you've set it to D8. Now what you're going to do is you're going to head over to the bind, press enter. All right, if your bind is too loud, you can use your volume control and you can turn it down a little bit like I just did. I do have a video on how to set that up if you don't know how. All right, so we've got our bind on. Now we are going to come over to our baby hawk r pro four inch and you got to find your receiver and your receiver is the one that has this little antenna sticking out of it this da receiver does not have diversity so you only have one antenna so on it is going to be a bind button and you can see it right here this is the bind button so i gotta hold that button down so i'm holding the button down on my receiver i am taking my battery and i'm going to power up all right and what that is doing is it's binding my receiver. I'm going to depower, then let go of the button, and then I'm going to press exit. Now to double check, what we will do is we will power it up. And we'll check our receiver to see that we have connection. Okay, if you're unsure, I am going to get you in here to show you if I cover this LED. You can see in there a green light flashing. I hope that you can see it right there. See that? That's letting me know that I bound my receiver correctly. And let's go ahead and put this back together. So now I need to flip my VTX antenna back over because we're going to stick it out the back. By now you should have a new antenna on or if you're going to run the dipole, that's okay. Drop your camera in, grab your canopy, stick your wires back through that little butthole right there because that's where it sticks out of. Feel free to get as creative as you like and put that any way that you would like. 
There is no right or wrong when you're doing FPV, man. There's The only thing you can do is the way that you want to do it. Alright, so I need to go ahead. You should have three screws that you took out. You should have a long one and two short ones. I'm going to grab my long one and I'm just going to stick it through the bottom. And I'm going to set it. Not going to lock it down. I'm just going to set it. And then I'm going to take my little ones on the right. And I'm going to pop them in. Make sure you've lined your camera up. So that way the screw goes right in. Grab your third screw. Now the goal is to not have your camera angle freaking through the roof. So drop it down just a little bit. The way the canopy sits, you're not going to get too low. So I would drop it till it's at least just above it so you're not seeing that in your camera. But as you can see when we're flying now, we're going to be at about this tilt rather than like this, which is a dangerous flight for a new pilot. All right, go ahead and lock these screws down tight. If you take off flying and you notice that your camera's shaking and you're getting jello, that means that you didn't tighten these screws enough. Come back and tighten these screws a little bit more. And now we're going to come to the bottom. We're going to lock that down all the way. All right, we're tight. We're back. We're ready. Let's jump over to beta flight. Okay, in order to get the modes tab, which we are going to go into the modes tab of beta flight, we are going to set up switches. In order to do that, you have to set up switches inside of your Tyrannus. That is going to make this video way too long if I go over how to do that. So I'm going to put a link in the video description on how to set up switches on your Tyrannus. All right, pilots. So now we're ready to rock and roll. You jumped into beta flight. If you don't have it, go download it. Once you download it, keep in mind you've got to put in the drivers. Here are the drivers right here. Make sure you put these on so that your beta flight will work. Next thing you're going to need is a micro USB. Hook it up to your computer and plug in your baby hawk. Bam. Now, mine connected all on its own, and that is because I have auto connect on. Go ahead and check enable expert mode right here, so that way you have all of the features and you can go through everything. The very first thing we are going to do is we are going to take a look at our firmware. My firmware that came on my Baby Hawk R Pro 4 inch is Betaflight 4.0.0. That is brand new firmware. I mean, there are a couple releases after this. If for any reason you are wanting to flash the next level of firmware, you're going to need to hold your boot button and plug in your USB. So you're going to hold this button down while plugging in your USB right there. See that button? Hold it down and plug in your USB. You should only have a blue light. Your quad should not run through the cycle of lights. That lets you know you're in bootloader mode. If you're not in bootloader mode, when you plug it in, you'll get a cycle of lights. That should look like that. See it flashing? I'm going to link a video down in the video description on how to update your firmware for beta flight flight controllers. Go ahead and follow that video if you want to update your firmware. If you don't care about your firmware, 4.0.0 is pretty good. I think it is. It's pretty damn new. I always do like to run the newest firmware, but this firmware right here is very new. So the very first thing I want to do is I want to place my baby hawk on my table 100% level, as level as I can get it. And I'm not talking about level on the screen. Do not pay attention to this for a moment. Just get it as level as you can get it. Once it is that level, then go ahead and click Calibrate Accelerometer. And it's going to get your gyro lined up and you're going to be level. Bam. Now I am boomed, boomed in the boom, boom room. If you head over to your ports tab, you'll notice that they've already set this up for you. And what they did is they put they put your receiver, your D8FR Sky receivers on UART2, as you can see right here. You've got your smart audio on 5, and you've got your camera control on 4. So what that means, if you've updated or changed anything in here, replace any of the components, make sure you use the same pinout. If not, you'll need to update that accordingly. But you do not have to do anything inside of here if you're a new Betaflight user or if you've got your Baby Hawk and you didn't touch your firmware. If you are going to flash, write this down, take a screenshot, whatever you got to do, because you're going to need to know this pattern right here to be able to run it the way that they've set it up for you. All right, let's head over to the configuration. They've got your ESC D-Shot 600. That's what it is. That's what it always will be because that's what this ESC is. Your gyro can handle 8.8, .8, so that's where they've got it. 
They've got your craft name at BHR4. That is gay and that is boring. So go ahead and change that and put something super sick and awesome in there. I am going to run the good old Drain Man FPV. All right, one thing we're going to do here is we're going to change our arming from 25 to 180 because I like to be able to arm my quad. God forbid it's not exactly flat on the ground. If I perch on a building and I'm tilted a little bit, I need to be able to arm to get off the ground, so make sure you do that. You do not have to touch this receiver section because it's set up for you already. If you did flash your firmware, you'll want to go ahead and come back in here and change it to serial based if it's not and put it on S bus. If you did solder up a crossfire, you probably already know that you've got to go to crossfire. All right, down here, everything looks good. They've got air mode on. You've got your filters on. You've got your iTerm booster on. You've got your telemetry on. I mean, you don't need to touch any of this. This is all perfect. I wouldn't touch any of this stuff here. All right, there you go. Then you're going to click save and reboot. After you've done that, let's go ahead and head over to the receivers tab. In the receiver tab, here's where your switches are going to come into play. Double check that your roll, pitch, yaw, and throttle are where they are supposed to be. If they are where they are supposed to be, then you're good to go. Head over to your modes. You can see they've already set up the basics for you. You're going to have to redo this. So what you'll do is you'll change this to auto and then you will flick your switch and it's going to move where it's going to move and then you will move this where you need to move it. That right there is going to be based off of the modes video. I have a whole video on that. I will link it. Go to that video and you'll know how to do that. You have nothing that you need to do in here. Your OSD. You are going to want to set this up. Everything here looks pretty good, but if you want to change any of this, you can. Like, for example, me, I like my voltage up here. I like to have my RSSI up here, you know, etc. I like my milliamp hours right under. So go ahead and do that. Set that up how you like it. Just It's literally that simple, guys. Just slide it around and drop where you want it. Go ahead and power up your goggles. And while you're moving this stuff around, hit the save button and make sure that it's putting it where you like it. If you don't like it, move it again. And then if you want to add stuff, you've got all this stuff here you can add. Keep in mind some of this stuff. I know some of you guys are looking at the GPS speed and you're thinking, woohoo, I'm going to get to see how fast it's going. And wrong. You're not going to be able to do that. You will have to get yourself a GPS and you'll need to put that in and solder it up if you want to do that. I do have a video on that too. I will link that down in the video description if you want to know how to set up GPS. That's going to do it for that. So now you set everything up. The last thing you're going to do is you are going to get your rates where you want your rates. Me, I set my rates somewhere different. I like my feed forward 100. I like my RC rate there. I like my super rate here, etc. I like my expo here. You guys will update this where you like it. Do not follow what I'm doing unless you know that that's what you like. Now you've unlocked your VTX. You've set up your VTX. I showed you how to get you to 200 milliwatts. We learned how to bind our receiver. We set that up and then we jumped in beta flight and we've done the basics now. Now what you'll do is you'll take your quad. You'll unhook it from beta flight. Hit save, save, save. Disconnect, pull it off a of beta flight, set it down, flick the arm switch, test hover. Make sure everything is working the way it's supposed to. If it's not working the way it's supposed to, that is what this video is here for. Pilots, I put this video here and I've got comments down in the bottom. We are going to use it as a thread. If you have questions, drop them. If you're experienced, answer them. I hope you guys have a blast with your new Baby Hawk R4 Pro. Freaking awesome quad. I hope you guys enjoy it. Have a blast. I'll see you in the next one.